A triple header of action in the association on this Thursday evening around the NBA. It is the final night of games before All-Star Weekend this weekend in Indianapolis. Tonight, the final night of NBA games, a week off. Next Thursday, we pick up action around the association again. So we're not at the midway point of this NBA season. Most teams around the association, 54, 55, 56, 57 of their 82 regular season games this season, Donnie. But it does give us a time to pause, reset, and look at where the landscape of the NBA stands, including in the MVP race. Now, the Philadelphia 76ers on a slide without the reigning MVP, Joel Embiid, who now has missed 20 games this season for Philadelphia, officially disqualifying him from any postseason awards or honors that would be all nba teams and of course in the mvp race as well you can only miss 17 games they hit that 65 game minimum out of the 82 in a regular season to qualify for mvp consideration and it's kind of a shame donnie he's going to miss more even after the all-star break with that left knee injury as well because the numbers and the efficiency that JoJo was putting up this season for Philadelphia, unlike anything we really have ever seen in the history of the NBA. Yeah, and by the way, some of that silver lining we talk about, now nobody ever wants to see an MVP get injured, but if there is something that you can point to towards the playoffs is, Joel Embiid can, re Joel Embiid can rehab that knee for the rest of the next two to three months here before the playoffs begin, if the Sixers make it in. Maybe he's rested and ready. Now, granted, to be a big man, you know, seven foot tall, 270, 280 pounds, it does take you some time to get back on the court and get those crazy skills that Joel Embiid has right back into the fold. Now, that could be a downside, but how many times, yeah. Ben, in the past couple of years have we seen the Philadelphia 76ers try to make a playoff running back? Oh, Joel Embiid's face is smashed. His knee hurts. He's sick tonight. You know, tendinitis. We've seen it all pop up on him. Maybe this is the one year where now that he knows he can't win the MVP, he's not going to rush back. The Sixers will take their time, and he will be better off for it once the playoffs begin. Because the one thing that we do know is here, the past couple of years haven't worked out in the Sixers' favor because why? Joel Embiid hasn't really been 100% for any one of these playoff runs. There's a chance that he possibly could be 100% yeah. for this playoff run, and I'm willing to let it stand here. You just need to pile a couple victories up. The one they led away last night, you're supposed to beat the Miami Heat in that spot here. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite them. But from my point of yeah. view, it actually might be a good thing that Joel Embiid can't win the MVP because he's not going to rush back then. Despite the struggles, they've lost nine of their last 12. The Sixers are still 10 games above 500, 32 and 22 in that fifth spot in the NBA's Eastern Conference. According to the odds, though, that's where Philly has taken a dip. Along with Boston and Milwaukee for most of this season, Philly had one of those other prices that was triple digits, now 16 to 1 for Philadelphia. They have lost nine of their last 12. Joel Embiid has missed 10 of those 12 games. So again, he is not on the board when it comes to the odds for the MVP market on the FanDuel Sportsbook. He will not hit the minimum for the Philadelphia 76ers this season, which almost by default, and I don't mean by default because the numbers are there, but the numbers are the expectation for Nikola Jokic, who won the two NBA MVPs the previous two seasons before Joel Embiid won it just a year ago. Now an odds-on favorite at minus 160. Shea Gilgis Alexander, second best price, plus 250 for the upstart Oklahoma City Thunder. And Giannis Antetokounmpo, third best price at 7-1. Those are the top three, Donnie. All three numbers with three digits in them to win the NBA's MVP award this season. But Nikola Jokic, the odds-on favorite in minus money, a minus 160 number now as Denver heads into the All-Star break. And by the way, we love new things, Ben, right? You take a look at SGA. They're getting a lot of respect at a plus 250 price. That's unbelievable yeah. here. Only behind Jokic, as you pointed out, that minus 160 price. Now, we talk about this. We, we had spirited conversations throughout the NFL season. Who should be MVP? And always talk about yep. the extracurriculars. Like, where does that team stand here? You know, Lamar Jackson deserved to be the MVP. They had the number one overall record in the NFL. They had a head-to-head -head match there with Brock Purdy in San Francisco that they won. So, despite the playoff success not being what we thought it would be for Baltimore, it's a 
regular season award. So I'm really interested to see the Minnesota Timberwolves, I think, have a game yep. lead over OKC at this point right now. If OKC can finish with the best record in the Western Conference, that's going to give a boost to SGA. And also, let's remind ourselves, he's not just one of those cogs in the wheel, you know, that goes around for OKC. Oh, on any given night, this guy could step up. SGA scores 30 points every single night. They're no longer a surprise yeah. here. He's been doing this now for a couple years. It's great to see the recognition, but it is going to be hard with Giannis Antetokounmpo putting up ridiculous stats on a night-to-night basis. Nikola Jokic, who we could probably agree, is the best overall NBA pair, most route, well-rounded NBA player. Yeah. But I love SGA. Let's see if that team can take down that number one seed because that'll give him a real boost in the MVP race. Two boosts for SGA, one being that Oklahoma City, 37 and 17, as Donnie alluded to, just a game behind Minnesota for that best record in the Western Conference. If the Thunder claim the number one seed entering the Western Conference postseason, a huge boost for Shea Gilgis Alexander. However, unlike a quarterback in the NFL, wins and losses not necessarily as closely associated with an individual player even the most important individual player for any NBA team second thing is Nikola Jokic winning the NBA MVP award for a third time in the last four years will there be voter fatigue for a guy that is not doing anything more outstanding than what he has already done And I understand that's a difficult bar to clear. When you are doing things that no other basketball player on planet Earth can't accomplish and doing it once again, it's like we hold you to a higher standard or at least we are expected to see those outcomes on a nightly basis. Because when you look at the numbers for Nikola Jokic this season, averaging better than 26 points per game, but that trails his two NBA MVP seasons in 2021-22 and 2020-21. and He is averaging less rebounds than he did two years ago, slightly more rebounds than he did three years ago when he won the NBA MVP award, 12 rebounds per game here and on pace in terms of the assists that he is averaging per game in those NBA seasons as well, slightly an uptick. But you compare it to last year, they're virtually the same numbers when he didn't win the NBA MVP award and it went to Joel Embiid. I think the idea of voter fatigue, given that Nikola Jokic is doing exactly what we expect him to do, and it's the highest bar that you could possibly set around the association. But given that he's pretty much on pace with the numbers we have already seen, win him an MVP award, I guess you look at the argument one of two ways. Well, if those numbers won him the most valuable player award, why wouldn't these be enough to qualify him for the same honor but also the glass half empty approach if we've already seen him do it with numbers that are slightly a little bit worse right now and by decimal points I would argue then are we just going to give him the NBA MVP award even though he wasn't the best player this year it just was a matter of injuries and the minimum that you needed to hit yeah, and we're still, look, we're, again, not all the way through the season. Let's just say three quarters or in somewhere in that range. Injuries are still going to happen the rest of the way out. So we'll have to placate that. But also, if you're taking a look, who's actually chasing him down? And I always preface this by saying the FanDuel Sportsbook doesn't yeah. actually vote on who gets to be the MVP. Right. It's just where the betting markets are pushing through. So I think it's always, you know, good to point that out because it's not Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's not Luka, Luka Doncic behind him saying, okay, minus 160, plus 100, plus 130. Whoa. Three superstars with big names who can go off, and they will attract those voters here. It is interesting that OKC is not a big market, and SGA, yes, basketball guys know him, but maybe the general public not all that familiar with his game, as if they would be for Jokic and Antetokounmpo and Doncic at this point. It's going to be interesting to see how that's treated, because on a night-to-night basis, he has been spectacular, but maybe not getting the attention that we always look at Luka Doncic here and Nikola Jokic. I'm interested to see where this actually winds up, because... I would love to see it tighten up, but you're right. Voter fatigue is a real thing. If you have two guys neck and neck, voters, the human element comes into it and goes, you know what? We gave it to Jokic a couple times. When is SGA ever going to be here again? He's more than qualified to the number one seed in the West. Let's go ahead and give it to him. That could happen. Right now, Shea Gilgis Alexander as well, Donnie, has scored 30 or more points in 38 Of the 53 games he has played this year for Oklahoma City, 37 and 17, the overall record. So Shea has missed only one game. Availability is a component now of the NBA MVP conversation because SGA has been out there in all but one game for a team that has the second best record in the Western Conference. 
he is going to factor in to the conversation. Nikola Jokic, one of the best things about his resume, 55 games for Denver, 36 and 19, the overall record for the Nugs. Nikola Jokic has played in 53 of the 55. Does it surprise you at all, though, Donnie? Because, again, in the NFL, different category, different set of evaluation, wins and losses tied to the quarterback award that is the MVP. But for the Boston Celtics right now, who have far and away the best record in the NBA, 43 and 12, Jason Tatum, based on the numbers he has put up this year, is 10, 000, plus 10,000, 1,001 to win the NBA MVP award, or 101, excuse me, as I try to get my numbers correct. Nobody really for Boston with the best record around the NBA is really a true factor in the MVP race in the association. And it's a shame for Tatum because equally he should be involved in the MVP conversation. He's a really good basketball player. But I think when we take a look at the MVP markets, like if you take away Tatum from the Boston Celtics, they're probably still a quality team. If you take away Jokic from the Denver Nuggets, it doesn't work. You take away Joel Embiid from the Philadelphia 76ers, it doesn't work. A young team like OKC who needs that guy scoring 30 points in SGA, you take him away, where would they wind up? And certainly Luka Doncic at a 13-1 to price, the same thing if you take him away from the Mavericks. I do. It's yeah. one of those where we talk about like the coach in the NFL, Ben, it's like, now hold on. They have a really good football team, so we can't give them coach of the year because that's not fair. It's wild how sometimes we break things down. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And Donnie said it. We are not voting on this award. The odds makers aren't setting the prices just because they will decide who wins the award. It's NBA media around the association.